Today I'm going to answer a question from a student who goes by the name of Siavash Kazravi, and I'm sure I mangled your name and I apologize for that. And his question is essentially, when using a Zener diode, why don't you use the maximum current instead of the test current? Well, let me just quickly remind you of how a Zener diode works. We have a battery here, and a current limiting resistor, and a Zener diode. We'll just make this a uh, 10 volt battery for the moment. Let's say this is a 1N4735, so that's going to be a 6.2 volt Zener diode at 41 milliamps. And that's also going to be a 1 watt diode, so that's an important thing to know. So this is the test current of 41 milliamps at 6.2 volts. So if I want to decide what resistor I need here, I use that test current, which is going to be 41 milliamps, and the voltage that will be across this resistor. So this is a series circuit, so whatever voltage is not here is going to be over here. So this is going to be 3.8 volts, and if I take my 3.8 volts and divide it by 41 milliamps, so 41 milliamps divided into 3.8 volts gives me a resistance of 90.2 ohms. So uh, roughly 90 ohms. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's going to give me a good target. I'll choose a resistor as close to 90 ohms as I can get. So the question is, why don't we design for our maximum current? Well, the maximum current is going to be our power dissipation divided by our Zener voltage. And so in this case, that's going to be 1 divided by 6.2, so that's going to give us a maximum current of 730. That's a lot more than 41 milliamps. But I guess the question is, well, shouldn't we design for the maximum current because that's what we want to uh, not exceed? Well, there, the reason we don't do that is this tells us that we will get 6.2 volts at 41 milliamps. What if we use a higher current? Well, if we look at the Zener diode, let's just look at the voltage curves. I'm going to draw a little X here. This is going to be 0 volts and 0 current. Now, if we forward bias the diode, meaning that our current is traveling, conventional current in the direction of the arrow, positive at the anode, and negative at the cathode, we're going to get a curve that looks like any other diode, and it's going to break at about uh, you know, 0.7 volts. But when we reverse bias it, which is the way we use a Zener diode, so it's going to be negative to the anode and positive to the cathode, now it's trying to conduct current in that direction, it's going to act like any other diode and say, no, you're not either, but when we get to the rated voltage, it'll start conducting. So we go more and more voltage, more and more and more, and at 6.2 volts, it starts conducting. But this is not a straight line. It doesn't go straight up and down. This is voltage, and this is current. So as we increase the current through the diode, we get a higher voltage. Let's put our circuit back here. So 6.2 volts at 41 milliamps. So if we go higher than 41 milliamps, this voltage is going to go higher. So it's no longer at its rated voltage. So we want to stay as close to that as we reasonably can. So this is going to be roughly 90 ohms. Can you find a 90 ohm resistor? Actually, I don't know off the top of my head. You just get as close as you can so that this current is as close to the rated current as you can, and that will keep this voltage as close to the rated voltage. So the reason we don't use the maximum current is because then we don't get the rated voltage. But there's another reason. If we design this around the maximum current, which, what was that? It was uh, 730 milliamps. That's going to be operating this right at its maximum one watt. It can do that. It can do it indefinitely without being damaged, but you're going to find something very interesting if you run these diodes at their maximum power dissipation. They're going to get warm. Maybe not enough to feel, but they are going to get warm, and every little air current is going to cool them off a little bit. So you look at the voltage across it, and it's going to climb up as it warms up, then a 
the little air current comes by and cools it down, that voltage is going to go down again. It goes up and down quite a bit, actually. The, the temperature affects the Zener voltage quite a bit. So we want to not run this close to its maximum power because we don't want it getting warm and then getting warm and cool and warm and cool and have the voltage go up and down and up and down. So we're going to not go near the maximum voltage and we're going to keep it as close to that as reasonably possible. So that's why we don't design around a Zener diode to use its maximum current because first of all we don't get the voltage we want and because of the heating that it does it's going to be changing temperature all over the place and the voltage is going to go all over the place. So there's your answer. If you found this video useful and informative please give me a thumbs up down below it really helps the channel and subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.